Hi, welcome back to my channel. My name is Laura and today I'm doing a Manga Monday recommendations video. Um, I'm filming it on Monday. I don't know when you're going to see this <laughs> because I've just been really bad at keeping the schedule, but I am determined to at least film all the videos. I think there's only possibly two or three more after this one, so I, I really do want to actually, you know, finish them all and uh, give you some recommendations of titles that I like. Um, so today's is um, like spooky horror type manga that would be appropriate for Halloween. Um, so it will kind of lean on the side of more scary and gruesome than my last list of manga that I put up. So um, if, you know, if you are prone to nightmares, this is probably not necessarily the list for you. Um, I'm not normally a person who likes horror things. Um, I certainly am not a Halloween person. I and certainly don't like it in movies or TV or books um, or really just anywhere else besides in manga, but in manga it's okay. And I think maybe it's just because you can be a little bit, or maybe because there's so many different styles of horror and um, the style that I have found in manga is a little bit more easy for me to manage and bear. And I like it. I actually like it, which is weird. Um, it's very weird for me. I don't know. I don't know what's wrong with me. I really, um, I don't know why manga is special that way, but it is, and it works for me. Um, I know that horror is subjective, and you know what I like is not necessarily what you're gonna like. But I thought I would at least recommend some titles that I did like. I don't even really know what it is that I'm recommending to you because I made a stack of manga about two or three weeks ago when I was planning on making this video and I haven't moved it, so I'm just going to go through and talk about some of the titles in this pile. Uh, the first title that I'm going to recommend to you is actually a new release, um, and it's one of the reasons why I'm recommending it to you, but I, th I had a lot of fun reading it just because I found it actually quite creepy and gory, and um, I just didn't know, I don't know still how the main character is going to get out of it, and that is Shibuya Goldfish by Hiromi Aoi. Um, this title almost exactly tells you what this story is. Um, there's a character, he's in Shibuya, something happens, all of a sudden they're invaded by flying goldfish. They're all sizes, all varieties, and they're everywhere. Um, and they're hungry, and they're just eating people by the truckloads. Um, and people cannot escape. Something has happened, and they've been able to close off Shibuya so that um, nobody can get in or out. Um, it's sort of like a goldfish bowl effect where nothing can escape and um, not only are the goldfish hungry and they're eating people but they're also producing at an alarming rate. Um, so you have a number of characters who are of course uh, trying to escape um, this horrific bloodbath. It really just feels like a gory zombie film and uh, that's really all you should take it as. There isn't a lot of plot, there isn't a lot of story, there isn't a lot of character development. It's just a bloodbath, but it just kind of cracks you up um, because it is goldfish and they just seem so unassuming and dumb uh, normally, but they've been plotting something and you may not want to own goldfish after you read this. It's pretty gross. Um, I am kind of looking forward to seeing where the story goes, or at least how they get the character out of it, because you know um, somebody has to survive this, I would suspect anyway, and I'm really curious how they do because it doesn't look like there's much hope by the end of this, so. Um, yeah, if a grossy, uh, disgusting zombie book starring goldfish sounds like your thing, this one's fun. Uh, the next title I wanted to recommend is actually one of my favorite titles, and um, it's just so funny and irreverent and stupid, and that just sort of works for me. Um, it is rated 18 plus on the back, um, and it is out of print, and that is Octopus Girl by Toru Yamazaki. Um, it is a comedy horror story. Um, it's basically about a girl who is so incredibly beautiful that um, she is bullied. Uh, I believe, if I remember correctly, um, she's just sort of like... Uh, accepts the bullying, like, oh, those people, they just feel really bad, so they're gonna treat me this way, and it's totally was okay with her. Um, but one day she wakes up, and she's got the body of an octopus, um, and she ends up sort of finding her life in the sea. 
she does is able to transform back um, back and forth between an octopus and a girl um, but really she just sort of finds this sort of twisted and warped and disgusting life it's just very irreverent and horrific um, she does make friends with a another girl who's who's um, body has been spliced together with an eel and so this girl actually can't transform back to a human and they're sort of best friends ish um, living in the ocean together um, and sort of having um, girly adventures together it's it's really disgusting um, but it is also really funny um, so there is a lot of like horrific uh, drawings uh, and there's a lot of like really just gross things that happen. They certainly do, um, you know, eat people and there's a lot of toilet humor and just sort of body humor and um, it's gross and uh, really funny at the same time. I really laugh uh, when I read it, particularly the third volume because in the third volume there's there's quite a lot of uh, fourth wall breaking in this series, but particularly in the third volume, uh, Yamazaki actually draws you in, so you are a character of this manga, and so when the girls are getting a little bit too out of control, you actually will reach into the manga and beat them up. Um, so it's just like so irreverent, it's so strange, um, and so disgusting, but I love it. so. Um, if you are into like really disgusting comedy horror, um, this one is pretty funny. And then the next title is also kind of funny as well, and also has a really similar uh, startup premise, but I really enjoy it, and that's Presence by Kanako Inuki. Now, I really would prefer to recommend this to you at Christmas, um, even though it is a horror story. There's, there's uh, a whole... Basically the whole, I think, second volume features Santa Claus, and he is horrible. <laughs> really, really horrible. Um, and it just, that's the reason I think probably that whole scene, that whole section where Santa Claus is um, doling out justice to the boys and girls who have, who have um, gone bad thanks to the gifts that he's given. Um, it's that, that whole section is really what turned me on to uh, horror manga. Um, so it's not necessarily the best in the genre, but it is something that I particularly really enjoy. It is about a girl, she's really beautiful and lovely, um, but everyone hates her, and so they decide they're going to play a trick on her on her birthday. No one gives her a present. Um, but what you don't know is that every time you open a present, a little bit of age is gifted to you. And so since she never receives a, a gift, she never ages. And so she is now kind of eternally a child, which is always creepy. Um, and she uh, gives gifts, special gifts to those people around her who deserve some special gifts. Um, and that gift always turns out to be a, kind of a horror horrific kind of justice to whatever situation they're in. So um, I just, I don't know, I think this one is quite funny. It is episodic, so it doesn't really build on itself. It is very situational. So you do kind of start to see the pattern pretty quickly, but um, particularly the second volume with Santa Claus in it is really great. And I just really like Kanako Inuki. She's, she's pretty great. Um, the only other title that I have and that I know of that's translated into English is uh, School something school. Can't think of it at the moment. Is it right behind me maybe? School zone. Um, and that one is, is quite fun too, but Presence is really my favorite. Uh, switching gears from comedy, uh, we have Bride of Deimos by Yuho Ashibe and Etsuko Ikeda. Um, this is very different. It is very out of print. It'll be hard for you to pick it up. And it's incomplete, but it's so worth reading. And it's one of my favorite things that I've read over the last two years. Um, it's only seven volumes in print in English, but it's a 17 volume long series in Japanese. I don't know how the story goes, but uh, up to around the seventh volume. Uh, basically what's happening is that Venus and Deimos are twin gods, I guess, and they have an incestuous affair. They are both punished. Venus is sent to hell to be eternally tortured, um, and Deimos is turned into basically the devil. Venus' soul is reincarnated as a young girl, uh, now Minako. Venus and Minako mean uh, the same thing, so uh, she is now sort of on Earth, and Deimos is now trying to 
uh, persuade Minako to fall in love with him. Uh, because basically he wants to drag her down to hell to give back the soul to his first love, who is Venus. Um, but his tactics are all those of the devil in a very evil and twisted way. You know, the way that he tries to convince her to fall in love with him is by torturing the people around her or torturing her herself. Um, not by, like, being convincing and making things look lovely. Um, he really is evil and he doesn't see it. Um, and there's no point where he sort of shows human emotion at all. Um, which is so unusual because I have read quite a lot of romances where the character falls in love with a demon or a devil. Um, and that character is always very human-like or even nicer than the uh, supposed, like, good characters or angels. Um, so the fact that this devil is really the devil just is very appealing to me. Um, and the fact that this is a shoujo horror. There aren't a ton of shoujo horror translated into English, um, but it is a genre and a demographic that just works so well, and I wish we would see so much more. The 70s, uh, when this was written, is, is an era of shoujo manga where the art is very melodramatic and it works for horror so well, and I just wish that this one would get picked up again because I want to read the end so badly. Uh, another title that was never completed, and it also feels, um, I think, like it's been rearranged somewhat, um, but I still really enjoy it, and I think more the nostalgia of the anime versus the manga, but I do like reading the manga too. This is uh, Three by Three Eyes or Sanzen Eyes um, by Yuzo Takata. Yuzo Takata is one of the very first mangaka that I was aware of and was my favorite right off the start. So this one is particularly important to me as sort of one of the very first things that I was in love with. Um, but I just really like this one. This one is about um, Pai who is a girl from, I can't remember if she's from China or Tibet, um, but she is the last of an immortal race. Um, she comes to Japan to meet the son of a professor that she had met who had died uh, while she was sort of under his care, um, and he had promised to help her become mortal. And she's now coming to see the son, Yakumo, who she believes will help her to become mortal. Uh, there are a number of things end up happening um, where uh, you discover that she has some sort of a um, magical ability where she can grant immortality to someone else. And so by binding himself basically with her, um, their lives are then linked and neither of them can die. Um, so this one is, particularly at the beginning, there's quite a lot of um, situations where he hasn't quite realized that he's immortal yet and he dies in horrible, horrible deaths. And it's, um, it's brutal and graphic, but really funny. Obviously I like things that are kind of funny, it lightens the mood. Um, it does sort of develop into this sort of um, epic adventure story. Um, there's a big twist in this story which I really like, uh, obviously not going to get into, but I like the relationship of these characters. Um, I like uh, the situation that they found themselves in, and I like the way that the story is handled, even though it is very dark and gritty and dirty. Um, I like the story, so I would recommend checking it out. If not the manga, certainly go and find the anime. It's fun. I can't get away without talking about Junji Ito. Uh, normally I would recommend Gyo, because that's my favorite of his work, but I never recommend Uzumaki, which is his most popular work. Um, and it is a fantastic title, and it's definitely a title you should read. Um, you know, if you even if you don't like Gyo, there is a different a different feel to the story. Um, basically, uh, if you don't know, Uzumaki actually is a word that means spiral, and so this is a story about the spiral and how the spiral has sort of um, possessed this town and has taken over this town, and every single situation and episode, a spiral seems to um, appear uh, in some horrific and twisting way. And it's really, really fantastic. Not only does the spiral kind of appear as part of the story, the story itself feels like a spiral. It kind of starts kind of clunky and all the, the, the episodes are very kind of separated and it just slowly starts to build and build and wind and wind. Um, so it is really a fantastic manga. The art in it is fantastic. Um, the structure is great and it really is just this twisting 
uh, mess of a story. There's some uh, images in it that I know I will never burn out of my mind. Uh, some very just sort of strange and bizarre illustration that Junji Ito is just so good at. Um, he draws strange, horrible, beautiful things, and uh, he's definitely worth reading. Um, if you don't read any other title, I think you probably should read Uzumaki. It's really great. Um, and then the last title I'm going to recommend to you is Lullabies from Hell by Hideshi Hino. This is out of print, but if you like horror manga, you should go read this. It's fantastic. Uh, try and get your hands on it. It's only a single volume. Uh, it shouldn't be that hard to find, hopefully. Uh, it was published by Dark Horse. Um, this is a series of short stories. Um, each of them have sort of different things going on, on in them, but they all have some sort of a creepy element. Hideshi Hino is known as a master of horror, but his horror really stems from um, sort of a naive or childlike art style mixed with just the grotesque. Um, it's really fantastic. Uh, the first time I read this, like, it just made me feel physically ill uh, to read it, and I had so much fun reading it. I have read it uh, since then. I don't feel ill when I read it anymore just because I am expecting the story, but um, I don't often have a physical response to reading manga. This is one of the few times that I have, um, and it was worth it. It was worth it. Uh, the first story is actually why I want you to read this, is because Hideshi Hino actually writes a very twisted and horrific style autobiography. That's his first story. It, it's, uh, it's, it's quite funny and uh, strange, and you're not sure how serious he actually is in this, but um, it is, it's really fun to read, and uh, gross to read, and just really delightful. So, you know, as delightful as horror manga can be. Um, I have a lot of fun reading this. I am so glad that we have Hideshi Hino in our collection. Um, I know there's a little bit more out there in the world that has been translated into English, and I am, um, you know, constantly looking for it when I go to different stores and stuff. He's someone that I always keep my eye out for because I know that his horror is just so much fun to read, and uh, really that's what I want in horror is fun. Fun more than scare. I'm definitely on more of the side of fun. Um, most of the things that I read obviously have a slight comedic element to them because I like a little lighten, lightened up horror. Uh, yeah, so anyway, I think Hideshi Hino is great. I particularly like this volume, um, and I think you should check it out if you like horror. So those are all of the titles that I wanted to recommend to you today. I actually have a pretty big stack here that I could have recommended. I didn't even get into telling you about Kazuo Omezu, who you probably should have started with, um, but none of his works are in print, so I didn't even bother going into that, uh, or into his work. Yeah, you should probably start there first. Um, but yeah, horror manga is fantastic. Uh, even if you're not really into horror, um, you know, if you're not someone who gets super scared, I would say just like venture in a little and see what there is, because um, there's so many different styles of horror manga, um, particularly in different, like, eras, the, the horror kind of changes, and, um, you know, you might find actually a pocket of horror that you really actually like, um, and that certainly was true for me. So that's all I wanted to recommend today. If you have any recommendations for horror manga, I would love to know it, and that's it. So thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.